YouTube. Ladies and gentlemen, wrestling fans alike, I'm here with the WWE SmackDown review. What a SmackDown it was. It was an enjoyable experience on Tuesday night for the most part. Feel free to hit that subscribe button if you love wrestling, if you love a wrestling YouTube channel. So we're about to hop right on into this. We started off with Daniel Bryan in the ring. He said he wanted to apologize to Sheep to comparing him to comparing them, excuse me, to people like us. This Daniel Bryan Hill character, you know, it's kind of but polarizing to be honest you know i see some people that like it on twitter i see some people that hate it i'm one that I'm, I'm coming around on it because they brand is pretty funny the new daniel bryan is pretty funny he called the people in las vegas parasites because they give and they take and give nothing back i loved it and all of that brought down mustafa ali and i gotta tell you when this match was announced mustafa ali versus daniel bryan i said oh my goodness this is like a mini pay-per-view for goodness sakes. So Miss Mustafa Ali came down talking about how he loved the old Daniel Bryan, how he didn't like the new Daniel Bryan. This boy Daniel Bryan is saying that, look, what type of car do you drive? And he got on Mustafa Ali about driving an SUV, which was this, this Daniel Bryan is like, Daniel Bryan has just been sitting on all of these takes. He's been waiting to turn hill to get them all out. But this led to a big brew, haha. That led to the match. So, Daniel Bryan versus Mustafa Ali. Just a classic waiting to happen. Look, I felt that this match was really good, but it was a match that never kicked into high gear, to be quite honest. I love the spots from this match. The Spanish Fly, even though the Spanish Fly came in at a moment to where it was screen and screen commercial break we had two commercial breaks in this match and it was like oh man that really kind of took away from the excitement of the match the excitement that i had going into it thinking that it would be a classic matchup but with that and all it was still a good matchup that i really enjoyed daniel bryan won with the heel hook and I, it, was a, it was a fantastic match, a good enough match to, to start the show. Not without what I was expecting, but good enough to get the job done. So, moving on after that, Dave Brown put the beat down on Mustafa Ali, locked on the heel hook on the floor. Mustafa Ali looked really good here. Uh, the, on 205 Live, the heart and soul of 205 Live, that's what I was looking for. He looked really good here, even in the loss, I enjoyed this match. Just didn't kick into high gear like I wanted it to. So after that, we had the Bar and the Usos, they had a rap battle, and you know there was a lot of hype he heading into this. You know, the, the first rap battle with the Usos and the New Day was just off the charts. Bananas great. And this one, eh, just quite wasn't great like that. The bar opened up by doing Ice Ice Baby lines, and oh boy, it was horrible to say the least. I think the funniest thing from that was seeing Xavier Woods trying to hold in his laugh. Ah, it was just horrible to say the least. And I mean, it was at points it was horrible, but at some points it was horribly funny. So I'll give him that. The Usos had some nice lines. They just went too long here. I like the lines about uh, Cesaro losing his teeth to the turnbuckle. That was really funny. But overall, the rap battle broke down into a brawl like all these things tend to do. The bar stood tall and uh, this rap battle did not live up to the billing to say the least. The Usos obviously went in the landslide. But the bar is staying tall as we head into TLC. So after that, The Miz was in the ring with the Best in the World trophy. Asked Shane McMahon to come down to ringside. Shane McMahon made his way down to ringside. The Miz wanted to team with Shane McMahon again. Shane wasn't feeling it. And I'll get to what I think about this storyline later on. But this, The Miz bought out. A referee and more jobbers came down. This led to the Miz and Shane in a like a one minute or a two minute match where Shane McMahon locked on the worst horrific looking triangle choke that you will 
ever see like I've seen a Black Friday video where a lady had on a better triangle choke than Shane McMahon had on oh, <laughs> on Tuesday night that was just horrible there's no kind of effort put into it but that's beside the point Shane McMahon and the Miz picked up the win over just two random local guys and this storyline with Shane and, and, and Miz man I Man, I just hope to goodness that it's not leading to WrestleMania. Because that's what it looks like it's leading to. And, like, can we just get to the point already? Can Miz just clobber Shane over the head? Or Shane clobber the Miz over the head? Can we just get to the point of the storyline already? Because this is getting boring. Afterwards, the jobbers wanted to get paid from Paige. And Paige just ripped up their papers. Wasn't having any of it. Uh, And that was pretty funny at the least. But... Randy Orton came down after this. He talked about Rey Mysterio. Talked about a chair. He had a chair in his hand. Talked about how you can use a chair to make a point. And we got some pointless video footage going back. And I'm just like, am I the only one tired of WWE doing this? Somebody standing in the ring about to cut a promo. And they say, well, if you don't remember, let's go back to the footage to show you. Like, we just saw it like a week ago. We, we, we remember. We saw the beatdown that Randy Orton laid on Rey Mysterio. Uh, Randy Orton talked about how Rey Mysterio was a victim in that he would not be getting his revenge on him. And surprise, surprise, Randy, Rey Mysterio was standing right behind Randy Orton. He put the beat down on Randy Orton, got some chair shots in, and got a 619 in to close the deal. So, I'll be done, but they have me interested in this little Randy Orton versus Rey Mysterio feud. Just two old guys going at it. Uh, event, you know, initially, I thought it was just some a one-off match that I, I wouldn't e- get long-term invested into. But they have me interested in I'm interested to see the match this Sunday at TLC. Even though I think a chairs match is so stupid. But that's beside the point. Looking forward after that, Becky Lynch came down, was backstage. And she talked about the Oscar versus Charlotte match. talked about how... She would have no advantage. And I got to say, Becky Lynch has this Steve Austin thing to where, like, going back into Steve Austin's heyday, like, right before he got massively over, it was just this thing I loved about Hill Austin. He would just ramble on about stuff. And I just found it so entertaining. I Like, I would rather see Steve Austin ramble on about things than most of what was going on in the programming of WWF at the time. And Becky Lynch just has a thing to where she could just ramble on about fighting, overcoming the odds and how every, everything's against her. And I can just see, listen to her ramble on a thing and it's more entertaining than most of the stuff I see on WWE television this, these days. So I enjoy Becky Lynch every time, whether it's just a random backstage segment or in the ring cutting a promo on somebody. So, she said that she would be ringside for the main event, Charlotte and Asuka, later on in the night. So, after that, we had Rusev and Jeff Hardy versus Samoa Joe and Shisuke Nakamura. And, look, this is just another point in the show to where I just got to give SmackDown their props. I uh, Even lesser than things like Rusev and Jeff, Jeff Hardy versus Samoa Joe and Shisuke Nakamura serve a point. We have the Rusev and Nakamura feud going on. We have Jeff Hardy and Samoa Joe feud going on. So we have ourselves a tag match. And uh, look, this is a decent tag match. To be honest, I enjoyed it. It was very solid. Uh, Rusev and Jeff Hardy picked up the victory. Uh, Rusev hit a heck of a machka kick. That thing, that machka kick and the Claymore. Those are two of my favorite finishers in WWE. They're just out of nowhere kicks that I love. Kind of just exactly like a super kick, to be honest. But that aside, good match. I enjoyed the fact that they built towards both feuds. Uh, I am ready to see Jeff Hardy and Samoa Joe. Uh, they've done a fantastic job with the, with the storyline. Samoa Joe just makes a total lemonade, lemonade out of lemons out of every feud that he gets. Doesn't matter who he's against. Uh, he finds a way to get you invested into the feud, even though most times he does not come out as the victor in said feuds. But I'm interested in both of these feuds. I hope Rusev eventually picks up the, the United States Championship, but that's another story for another day. We'll see how it turns out. Pretty good tag match here. I enjoyed it. 
So after that, Shane and Miz were still arguing, and Shane just left Miz hanging backstage. So I don't know if this is the heel turn or the face turn for the Miz or whatever. I just want them to get to the point already because it's getting annoying. After that, we got the first and only appearance from AJ Styles on the night. He talked about how he was going to beat down Daniel Bryan and how he couldn't wait until Sunday to get his title back. So AJ Styles... Just got put in at the end of the show there. I didn't particularly like that, but it is what it is. We're off and running to TLC this Sunday. After that, we had the main event. Asuka versus Charlotte in a WrestleMania rematch. And Becky Lynch was ringside. And I got to say that Asuka and Charlotte, look, they are two people that have phenomenal chemistry. And this was no different. We had a phenomenal match, and uh, I gotta say that before the match started, I thought that, okay, man, I really like to see this end in the DQ, because I like to see this go on at WrestleMania, and I'm not sure if WWE has that in their plans, but what we got was a phenomenal match. Uh, We had some really good spots. The moonsault into the Oscar lock was a uh, really good spot that I enjoyed. Uh, Charlotte going for the figure eight was a nice callback on Asuka. Uh, back when she tapped out at WrestleMania, sadly tapped out. But this is a phenomenal match. It ended in a DQ with Charlotte going all Sandman. I guess this is just her gimmick now. She's the female Sandman. She pulled out a kendo stick and started wearing Asuka out with it. And then Becky Lynch got involved. And we had ourselves a huge brouhaha between Charlotte and Becky Lynch. And then out of nowhere, Asuka grabs... The kendo stick and starts wearing Charlotte and Becky out within the crowd is just losing their minds because the people still love Oscar. No matter how WWE treats her, the crowd still loves Oscar. I still love Oscar. I lost it. I loved it. It was a fantastic way to close the show. Obviously, Oscar is not winning the title this Sunday, so they have to make her look strong to close the show. I enjoyed every bit of it, and I enjoyed that Charlotte and Oscar ending in DQ as well. Maybe we will see that down the road. I'm hoping for it, where Oscar overcomes the odds, but I'm not betting on it anytime soon. Uh, SmackDown uh, was a good show overall. Wasn't I? Wouldn't put it in the pantheon of a great SmackDown. We've been seeing some great SmackDowns lately. Uh, this wasn't a great SmackDown, but there were some th- there were many things about it that I enjoyed very much. So I enjoyed it overall, and it was a phenomenal go home show to TLC. To which, uh, to be honest, the build overall from Raw and SmackDown hasn't been great t- for TLC. But it is a fantastic car when you look at it at its own. And I'm looking forward to sitting down and watching four hours of it. It should be a phenomenal show. So let me know what you think. Whether that be on YouTube, in the comments, or on Twitter, at OMGCoreB, or at 2 Sweet Pod. That's the number 2, Sweet P-O-D. Let me know your thoughts on SmackDown and your overall thoughts on TLC. Uh, stay tuned because I will be having a podcast breaking down TLC this Thursday. So stay tuned for that. On that note, I am out.